Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, actually, in our last lecture, we introduced the probability distribution, and we said the probability distribution that means you have random variable with different values, and for each value, you have the probability. And we have two conditions uh, uh, that has to be, we have two conditions that have to be actually satisfied to say you have a probability distribution. At first, each probability value between 0 and 1, and the sum of the probability values equal 1. So uh, now I will add one uh, more point, how I can have a probability distribution as a function. So in our course, we have different probability distribution functions. So now I will give you the uh, overview for all what we have as a probability distribution uh, function. So just to remind you first, if you have a frequency table, assuming that a frequency table, you have x, any uh, random variable x that has four values, one, two, three, four, and assuming for each value you have now a frequency. Frequency means the count for each value. One, you have a frequency 20, two, have the frequency 30, three, you have the frequency 30, and four, you have the frequency 20. From that frequency table, we said we can find a probability distribution, uh, a probability distribution as a table. So for the value x, we have a frequency 20, you can find a relative frequency, and we can consider that a probability for a value of x equal 1. So 20 over 100, the sum of these values equal 100. So 20 over 100, 0.2, a second value 0.3, third 0.3, and last one 0.2, the sum of these values equal 1. So now ignoring the, ignoring the column for the frequency, okay, and only using x, and the probability of x, considering a relative frequency as a probability of x, then you have a probability distribution. In that probability distribution, you have four values for x, and for each value, you have a probability. And now two conditions actually are satisfied. Two conditions. First, each value of the probability between 0 and 1. Second, sum of the values of the probability equal 1. So that is a probability distribution. So uh, the last lecture, we introduced that. Till now, I'm just reviewing actually what we had already. Uh, so, how I can calculate the average or the expectation value of x? So, in that case, we cannot say a mu, the mean or the average of the values of x equals sum of the values divided by the number. We cannot do that. Why? Because now for each value of x, you have a probability as the weight for that value. So to find the mean, you have to use a new formula for a mean. Mu equal now it will be sigma x times the probability of x. Now considering the values of x and the probability of x in the same time, so that how to find the mean or the mu. Second, how to find the variance? You have to modify the formula as we had before. It has to be sigma squared now equal sigma x squared times the probability of x, all that minus mu squared. And now mu, the average or mean that you are calculating in first in the first case. So please refer to the last lecture how to calculate a mean and the variance from a probability distribution. So what, did, what we have in you in our lecture today. Now I'll give you a map for the probability distribution. We can divide that. So a probability distribution actually in general a probability distribution just can be uh, two classifications as a table so the classification for the probability distribution first we can divide the probability distribution as a table just as very similar to what we covered now similar to last lecture we have x and the probability of x in one table and you have two conditions now satisfied the second classification the probability distribution as a function so first you have a table as we had now and as a function so probability distribution function can be classified as discrete and continuous. For discrete, in our course, we are covering only two distributions, binomial distribution and Poisson distribution. And uh, for the continuous probability distribution functions, we have still we have two, we have a uniform and we have a norm, and all these four distributions uh, I will cover actually in our course. So what is the meaning that the probability distribution as a function? Very simply, you have a function, you have formula. If you substitute in this formula with the value of x, then you are getting a probability of x. You don't have a table that includes all the values of x and the probability of x, no. Just you are substituting in this formula with the value of x, then 
you are getting a probability of x. So very simple example for that, a Le Poisson distribution, just that special case, now I'm giving a special case of from a Le Poisson distribution, a Le probability of x equal e to power negative x divided by x factorial. So I can write that again, just to be clear for you. So that the special case, I'm saying special case y, I will tell you later on why I mean by special case. So e to power negative x, that the value, that a variable that I need to find the probability for, divided by x factorial, L e and the factorial, I can find that from a calculator. I Just now I will show you how we can use a Casio calculator to find the e and to find the factorial. So now if you have a probability of x equal, if you have a probability of x equal e to power negative x divided by x factorial. So that general formula. So now if you substitute with the value of x in this formula, you are getting a probability of x. Assuming now, uh, using this formula, I need to find a probability that x equal 3. Uh, what is the probability that a variable equal 3? So how to substitute? Very simply in this formula, I need to find the probability of x equal 3, then substitute in this formula using x uh, equal 3. So now it will be e to power negative x, that e to power negative 3, divided by x factorial, that will be 3 factorial. Then you can substitute using your calculator and find the value. That, in general, the general overview, what I mean by probability distribution as a function. So in our course, I'm covering four uh, probability distribution functions. Each, actually, each function has a name and has some conditions and some applications. So what is the meaning of the binomial distribution? What are the conditions to apply that? The second, Poisson, third, uniform, and last one, normal. That will be in our course. Today, uh, just I will start with the binomial distribution, then with the Poisson distribution. Before starting a binomial distribution, I need to show you how to use a calculator for that. So that our calculator will cast you, assuming I think most of you, you have the same calculator. So now to find the factorial using shift and that button, that will give you uh, actual factorial. So if I need to find the three factorial, if I need to find the three factorial, you just first write three, then shift x to power negative one will give you factorial, that will give you result. Uh, other actually e how to find the e you'll find in this uh, in this calculator e i think that for that l e shift len so if i need to find e to power negative three just i will write shift len and then in the bracket negative three that will give you e to power negative three and others i will show you today we need to use ncr the combinations ncr shift a division sign will give you NCR. I need that in the binomial distribution. Okay? Even for the Poisson, I need an E, shift len. For the binomial, I need shift a division sign to have NCR or the N combinations R or any choose R. I think you covered that before in the discrete mathematics, but in general, just you have to know how to use that in the case of the binomial distribution. I will, I will make the distributions uh, short and simple actually. So in any question, I will give you the name of the distribution to simplify it for you. So I will tell you, use binomial, use a Poisson, use uniform to be easier for you to know how to apply directly a formula. Yeah, but for each distribution, for this, we have formula I have to use. Only we have a special case for the normal. I will tell you how we can, we don't have formula, a formula, indeed we have formula. It's very complicated then, uh, we can use instead, we can use uh, the uh, probability distribution uh, table, our standard normal table. So for the binomial, we have function, formula. I have to use it. For the Poisson, I have formula. I have to use it. In uniform, I have formula. I have to use it to find the probability for a specific value of x. For the normal, we have formula. It's very complicated. Then we have a standard normal table that can help us. For the other distributions, yes, you can use uh, tables, but in formula, it's easier to use. So now I will start with the binomial distribution. That's the formula for the binomial distribution. Okay. So if you have, we have some conditions to use a binomial uh, distribution. Uh, these conditions can be simplified. First condition, you have a specific experiment with n trials. For each trial, you have two outcomes. 
we can name them as success or failure and third condition the probability of success is constant over the trials and you have independent trials so you can say for the to use a binomial distribution we have independent trials each trial with with two outcomes and the probability of one of these outcomes is constant over the trials that you have that the conditions to use a binomial distribution if it's not easy for you uh, to specify you have binomial experiment or not binomial distribution or not then i will give you that clearly in the question we are using binomial distribution to simplify uh, for you how to use a uh, which formula you have to use so now how to read the formula the probability of x equal ncx from the calculator as i told you times lp to power x times eq to power n minus x and we have an x any value from 0 to n. I need to actually explain each one of these. First, ln, that's the number of trails that you have. Lx, the number of the success, or the number of two outcomes of these, uh, 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 of the number of one of the two outcomes of the trails that we have. So x, it will be our random variable. So now in the formula, find we have a probability of x. So ln, that's the total number of trails, will x a number of success in these uh, trails that you have and p that the probability of one of these two outcomes we said we have two trails each trail sorry we have n uh, trails in each uh, trail we have two outcomes the probability of one of them one of these outcomes we name it as a success so the probability of one of these two outcomes we name it as p will complement a q so if the probability of one of outcomes is p, then the probability of the second outcome, it will be one minus p, we name that as a q, that will complement from the probability, we covered that before, okay? So I will show you how to use that. So now, in general, to simplify the idea, I will apply that for example two. In example two, how I can solve that? In any question, if you have n as number of trials, and you have p, as a probability of the probability of two outcomes, then you have a binomial experiment. And from that we have a name, binomial. Bi means two outcomes for a specific a trial that you have. So you have n trials, each a trial only one of two outcomes, two outcomes for each a trial. So now we can read that. We can read example two, and then I'm trying to solve that using a binomial to be clear for you what is the meaning of the binomial, then we can uh, actually solve uh, other questions so now according to a survey conducted by a payment system 80 percent of consumers pay by cash at retail stores let x be a discrete random variable that denotes the number of uh, customers in a sample of five who pay by cash when shopping at retail stores now the point i need to add in that equation we have only two outcomes paying by cash or not paying by cash so that's the first actually condition if you are paying by cash that 80 percent and not paying by cash what is the probability not paying by cash the complement of that it will be 0.2 so in that equation p the probability of paying by cash it will be 0.8 and q the complement of that it will be 0.2 and we have a sample of five that means you have a number of a trails now a number that given for you we name it a number of a trails equal five so you have a p and you have an n given given for you in that equation so now clearly that is binomial distribution but anyway i will add in the question as a note for you using binomial distribution just actually to simplify the question for you يعني دائما الاسئله اللي فيها البروبابيلتي معطى ليك البروبابيلتي اوف وان اوف تو اوت كامز يعني احتمال نجاح واحتمال فشل احتمال يدفع كاش او لا البروبابيلتي اوف فيميل اند البروبابيلتي اوف ميل يعني دائما الحاجات اللي فيها تو اوت كامز بيسموها الباينري هنا غالبا هتبقى الاكسبيرمنت باينوميال كلمه باي نوميال الباي جايه من تو يبقى هنا معناها تو اوت كامز دائما انا في الكوستشن ممكن اديك الاسم الديستريبيوشن تو سمبليفاي الايه الكوستشن فور يو ذات الفورمولا The formula saying in the x that the random variable from zero to n, whatever the n. If now question one, what are the possible values that x can assume from the formula 
x assuming any value from 0 to n. What is the value of n in that equation? E equal 5. So that equation now is binomial. Why? Because you have n in number of trails given for you, in number of specific objects. And for each trail that you have, you have two outcomes. You have two possible outcomes. Can be cash, paying by cash, or not paying by cash. So that is binomial. In general, I will give you a name of the distribution to simplify it for you. So question A, what are the possible values that X can assume an answer? X equal 0, 1, 2, tell N. Ibal values now equal X equal 0, tell 5. Ibal answer for question A, X equal 0. Integer values, tell the value, the maximum value 5, that is the value of N. Question B, write the probability function of X. Means write this function after potting the values that you have for P and Q and N. So now that is binomial, yes, I will write the binomial. But actually write the binomial using P equal 0.8, using N equal 5 and so on. So that is function as we have now. So I will write the probability, that will answer for question B, probability of x equal n c x, but I know n is 5, so 5 c x times p, I know p is 0 0.8, times 0 0.8 to power x, times q, q1 minus p is 0 0.2, you can write 1 minus 0 0.8 or directly you can write that is 0 0.2 to power n, which is 5 minus x. That's the formula. And you, can, you have to add in the values of x from 0 till 5, till n. If I write the probability function, means write the probability function that you have, but substitute with the values that you know already. I know the P, I know the N, I know the Q, then substitute with these values. So that is the meaning of the probability distribution function. That is question B. Uh, question C, find the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so now one point I need to tell you. If you have a probability, I will return back for the table. I don't have now one table, I don't have an X and the probability of X. Well, one point I need to tell you, just as a revision, I told you, if you have a probability function that similar to that way, you have an x and a probability of x, so that's the way to find the mean and to find the variance, and from the variance you can find the standard deviation. But actually in the binomial case, I don't have a probability distribution. So, and I don't need to find, il, il, sorry, I don't have a probability table. Okay, I have a probability distribution function, yes, but I don't have a probability table. Okay, so question C, to find the mean and standard deviation, we can prove that, that it will be given for you. You don't need to prove that. You can prove that in general for the binomial distribution, you have a mu all the time equal n times will be m n times p. That's mu. If I have an n given for you, you have a p given for you, then the average all the time equal n times p. In our case, that equal 5, that is value of n, times p, 0.8, so that equal 4. So what is the mean or the average of x based on that information? That equal the value 4. Why? Because for the binomial distribution, we can prove that mathematically, mu equal n times p. Second, I will give you the variance, then the standard deviation. The variance, sigma squared, we can prove that. It's proved mathematically for you. You don't need to prove that. Is sigma squared equal n times p times q. So that equal 5 times 0.8, that n times p times q which is actually 0.2. So that equal 4 times 0.2. Okay, that equal 4 times 0.2 equal 0.8. So that is the value of the variance. Now I need to find the standard deviation. All the time, the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So all the time for the binomial distribution, sigma, the standard deviation equal 
the square root for n times p times q. You can substitute directly. Okay, so that in our case will be the square root for the value 0.8, whatever that value, so that's how to find. So now, the binomial distribution, because you have one function, you have a probability distribution function, that function simplifies actually all the calculations. Okay, simplifies all the calculations. How to find the probability? Directly substitute in the formula. How to find the mean? Substitute in the formula that the mu equal n times p. How to find the variance? How to find the standard deviation? So please, you have to know what is the function of the binomial, how to find the mean, how to find the variance, how to find the standard deviation, okay? So the probability distribution function in general simplifies the calculations, giving you a general pattern for that, for that distribution. You have conditions. Once you have the conditions satisfied, then you can apply the probability distribution function uh, for that case. For the binomial, you have some conditions. Once satisfied, then you are applying a probability distribution function. Okay, so now we answer the question A, question B, question C. Question D, you have different, uh, you have uh, sub-questions. How to substitute in the formula to answer that or to find the probability? Indeed, I, I will simplify that for you. So now I will answer question I. Question I, find the following probabilities. Two, uh, we have uh, two uh, customers pay by cash when shopping at uh, retail stores. So we have two, paying by cash. That means I need to find the probability of X equal to, and assuming now in X, the number of, the number of consumers paying by cash. We're assuming that, why? Because it's given for you directly the question. Let X, that is discrete, random variable, that the number of uh, customers uh, paying, uh, paying by cash, okay? So that means I need to find the probability of X equal to, so now X equal to, I have a P given, 0.8, I have a N equal 5. So just I need to substitute in this formula using X equal to. So in question B, you have a probability function, so that function. So now in equation D, just I will substitute in this formula with the values of X that I have, okay? So question I, what is the probability that X equal to, just I will substitute in this formula. So please using your calculator, check now how to find, I will give you an answer, and then you have to check that you have the correct answer for that, okay? So I need question D, that is question D. So a question D, I, I need to find the probability of X equal to, how I can do that? I will substitute in this formula with X equal to. Now I'm, I'm writing using the binomial table. No, in our course, we'll not use a table because using a calculator is easier actually, okay? It's easier. So just substitute in this formula. Please check that you know how to use a calculator. Write five and then shift the division sign giving you C, and then write 2 as X times 0.8 to power 2 times 0.2 to power 5 minus 2. That will give you 0.0512. Please check that you have uh, that answer. That for question I. The second question, the question uh, 2, what is the probability to have between 2 and 5? Uh, customers pay by cash, still you have a P for cash, paying by cash. So I'm, I'm actually putting no, as note for you, uh, two and five not included. That means exclusive, not including two and five. So what are the remaining? Between two and five, not including two and five, includes a three and four. So uh, I have to substitute in this formula two times, one time using X equal three, and second time, using x equal 4. So to answer question 2, that question, I have to substitute in this formula two times. One time using x equal 3, second time using x equal 4, and then please check that using the same values for p and q, check that you have uh, the same answer, okay? Question 3, at least uh, two customers pay by cash. At least two. What is the meaning at least two? That means a minimum value two. And a maximum value, tell the value of n that you have. 
So at least two means the probability of x greater than or equal to what that the minimum value of x in that equation. The minimum value of x equal to what is the maximum value? The maximum value equal five. So now I have two ways to answer that equation. I need to discuss that point. So how I find the probability of x greater than two, greater than or equal to? I have two ways to answer that equation. Let's now discuss how I can answer that equation. Okay, using uh, that formula. So now I need to answer question three. Question three, I need to find the probability of x greater than or equal to. So first, just I need to give you one point about that. Please, I need to uh, explain that in details. And in the same time, I need to be very careful how I can find the complement uh, from a probability idea. So the probability of x greater than or equal to, and I know that the maximum value for x equal 5. It's given for you in the question that n equal 5. So that very simply equal the probability of x from 2 to 5. Probability of x equal 2 plus probability of x equal 3 and so on till the maximum value probability of x equal 5. That's the, the first way to answer. One point I need to tell you actually. So now, how many times I have to substitute? How many times I have to substitute? Four times because I have another one. Just can add it actually. There is no need to put dots for that. Probability of x equal 4. Okay. And the probability of x equal 4. So I have the probability of x equal 3 plus the probability of x equal 4. Okay, so how many times I have to substitute in the formula of the binomial? Uh, four times. 2 till 5 giving you uh, four times you have to substitute in this formula. Okay, that plus. So that's the first way to answer. Another way, just I can write that down actually. All the values of x, uh, you are saying that all the values of x, what are the values of x? x actually from 0, that is the minimum value, and then 1, and then 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, that's all the values of x. So now the question, I need to find the probability of x greater than or equal 5, so includes all these values. That's our question, actually. I need to find the probability of x equal 2, 3, 4, 5. Another way, I know from, from a probability distribution function, sorry, from a probability distribution, I know that a sum of the probability of x, or the sum of the probability for all the values of x that equal 1. If you find the probability of x equal 0, plus the probability of x equal 1, plus the probability of x equal 2, and so on until 5, adding them up, we give you 1. So if I need to find the probability of x greater than or equal to, you have two ways. The first way, just find the probability of x equal to plus the probability of x equal 3 plus the probability of x equal 4 plus the probability of x equal 5. That's one way. The second way, you can find the probability of x equal 0 plus the probability of x equal 1 and subtract the probability of these two values from 1. So second way to answer that equation, that equal, L1, which is the sum of the, all the probability values, minus the remaining values, a complement, which is equal, actually, a probability of x equal 0 plus, be careful, we are starting from 0, okay, based on the formula. I have to start from 0, plus the probability of x equal 1. So that's sometimes giving you the way to reduce your calculations. So instead of substituting four times in the formula, now you can substitute only two times, one time with, S, with x equal 0, second time with x equal 1, adding them up and then subtract that from 1 will give you the same value. So please try that. Find the probability of x equal 2 till 5, adding them up and find the value and then find the probability of x equal 0 and find the probability of x equal 1 and adding them up subtract that from 1 
and then find the value you'll find that very similar or they are equal exactly exact values okay that's how to find so please check that you find the probability equal point uh, point uh, nine nine three three one one way i need to add how to find how to simplify the calculations for that case another way using a calculator i need to add that for you okay so please now we can give you uh, one more information to simplify the calculations if you are using a calculator if you are using a calculator and you need and you don't need to use a complement and you need to directly find the probability what you can do now i have to substitute four times in this formula actually the calculator give you another way you can reduce the calculations you can use a summation notation so that equal and then you can use a summation notation from a calculator that formula sigma and then write the value of x range of the values that you have x from 2 to 5 write that x equal 2 tell x equal 5 and then write the formula the same with x not substituting the values of x okay so now i write that that equal and then from a the calculator i will show you how to find the summation notation i think shift log will give you sigma and then shift alpha sorry alpha x will give you the value of x and write 2 to 5 and then write the formula then it will be 5 cx inside the summation times 0.8 that actually multiplication okay to power x times 0.2 to power 5 minus what i need to say instead of substituting all these times you can substitute in the calculator using a summation notation that will save your time and the calculator itself will substitute for you from x equal 2 to 5 and also you can use a complement idea i need a complement idea mainly in the case of the poisson distribution later on i will see in the poisson distribution we don't have maximum value for x x from 0 till infinity then if i have that equation x greater than or equal to in the Poisson distribution, it's not easy to use this formula. I have to use a complement. But in general, you can use a sigma notation for all the calculations. Okay? And instead of substitute two times, you can use a sigma notation from 0 to 1. And yeah, you can use that sigma from 2 to 5, and you can use a sigma for that point from 0 to 1. So a sigma actually notation, our summation notation in the calculator can be used to save your time. Please, you have to check, you know how to use it. اوكي okay. يبقى علامه المجموع موجوده في الكالكوليتر في الكاسيو هتسهل عليك بدل ما كل مره تعمل تعويض في الفورمولا مرتين او ثلاثه او اكثر لا انا مستخدم ممكن نستخدم السيجما نوتيشن هنشوف الكالكوليتر سريعا اوريكم فين في الكاسيو موجوده ذات 1 اوكي شيفت لوج يو هاف تو لوج اكشولي اوكي that log for any uh, base that log for a base 10 okay so now shift log in the first row that will give you a sigma our summation notation and then alpha bracket will give you x then write x from zero or whatever numbers in our case from two to five okay so how i can put that just shift log will have a summation and then write alpha x and then equal to and then for the upper limit write 5 and then substitute inside the formula using x from alpha uh, x okay so that will actually save your time please you have to check you know how to use a summation uh, notation so now i answer the question to uh, in details all the other questions actually it's given for you so now we can i, I show you question example three it's very simple just I can read now example three with you, and then uh, we can, I will tell you the answer. Still I have an answer for that using the same idea. So now I will clean that, and we can uh, read again, again example three. Okay, just to simplify that, because example three is direct question, it's simplified for a binomial distribution, and then 
we can see how to use the formula. So be careful how to find the mean and the standard deviation from a binomial using a formula, as I told you before. So read that example three. The probability that a student is accepted uh, to a college is 0.3. So now we have one student. And for that student, we have two outcomes, two possible outcomes. The first possible outcome that he will be accepted or is accepted with the probability 0.3. And the probability to be not accepted with a probability 0.7. So now, the first information given for you in that equation, you have LP equal 0.3, the probability of acceptance. And then directly, you can find the Q, the probability of not be accepted, that equal 0.7. That's the first information. So we have a probability of one of two outcomes, acceptance and uh, uh, the probability to be accepted and the probability to be not, uh, to be not accepted. So uh, the second information, if five students from the same school apply, so now each student now is a trail. Each student now is a trail has two possible outcomes, to be accepted or to be not accepted. Okay? So now L5 is N, and we have N equal 5 in that equation. And the equation, exactly, what is the probability that at most two are accepted? That, assuming that equation A. Question B, find the mean and standard division. First, that is binomial. Why? Because you have LP is given for you and LN and you have all the conditions for the binomial distribution is satisfied. All the, condition, all the conditions are satisfied for the binomial distribution. Now, how I can answer? I have information. I have LN, LP, LQ. Then to answer the question one, at most two, and probability of X less than or equal to, that includes X equal zero, equal one, equal two. I have to substitute in this formula three times with P equal 0.3, Q 0.7, and N equal five. So that's the answer. I said, I said, okay, to, to answer that equation, I have to substitute three times, one time zero, one, and two. Substituting in that. A second way, using a summation notation in the calculator, as I told you. So please check that. You'll find the answer in the lecture notes. Please try to use uh, the calculator and check your answer. One time, uh, substituting one by one. Second time, use a summation notation in the calculator and check you have the same answer. And later on, all the time, use the summation notation. Okay? A second question, find the mean and standard deviation. As I told you, in general, a mean or a mu equal n times p. So that equal 5 times 0.3. Second, a sigma, a variance. A variance, a sigma squared, n times p times q. The standard deviation, the square root of the variance. So direct substitution, the square root for 5 times 0.3 times 0.7 equal the square root for 1.05, almost approximated equal 1. So, a mean equal 1.5 for the standard deviation equal 1. That is summary for the binomial distribution. You'll find many questions actually answered in that. So, now example 4, just to can see that with you and leave the uh, answer, the, the solution for you. So, example 4, according to, according to uh, the Bureau of Statistics, 60% of households headed by single women are in autos, find the probability uh, that in a random sample of nine households headed by single women. And then you have exactly, uh, you, have, uh, you have three questions. So in the head of the question now, in the head of the question, I have uh, for, each, for each household, we have two possible outcomes. Okay? So uh, two possible outcomes. Own O2 or does not own O2. So the household, the household, actually owns O2 or does not own O2. So that the 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 uh, the idea. So you have two possible outcomes. So that is, will be P in our question, that P equal 0 0.6. And directly a complement for that Q equal 0 0.4. And you have an N equal 9. Question A, exactly 8. So I will use a binomial distribution using x, assuming x, assuming x that the number of households headed by single women own autos. Okay? 
assuming that that will be x so x the number of households headed by single women own autos so uh, how to answer question a i have a p equal 0.6 i have a q equal 0.4 i have an n equal uh, 9 and then a question a means find the probability of x equal 8 direct substitution in the formula of the binomial distribution it will be n c x which is 8 times p which is 0 0.6 to power x which is 8 times 0 0.4 1 minus p q to power n minus x n nine minus x 8 which is 1 actually and then you can find that using a calculator one time question b none owns autos that means the same question as we have now but you have an x equal 0 so question b okay just find the probability of x equal 0. A question C. Be careful about question C. All nine own autos. What will be the value of x in that equation? Please think now. What is the value of x in equation C? All nine own autos. That means find the probability of x equal exactly 9 okay some people they said it's greater less than or equal 9 no it's exactly 9 that equals question c and substitute in the formula the same just to change the value of x question d at least 2 oh that one probability of x at least 2 greater than or equal to okay so now how to find that i have to substitute in this formula the binomial distribution function i have to substitute eight times from two to nine it takes time it takes time to do that i have two ways first way using a complement one minus a probability of x equal zero plus the probability of x equal one so find the probability of x equal zero and the probability of x equal 1, adding them up and then subtract that from 1 using complement. That's one way. Second way, using a sigma notation. x equal 2, tell the maximum value 9, and then, sub and then substitute in this formula with 9, which is n, cx times 0 0.8 to the power x. Leave x without any substitution because the calculator will substitute from 2 to 9 for you times point sorry that point 6 that point 6 times point 4 to power 9 minus x okay so that all that inside the bracket for the summation notation if i have n you have a p you have a q but you leave x without substitution because the calculator will substitute for you from 2 to 9 and that way simplifying the calculations don't waste your time to substitute from 2 to 9 8 times in that formula okay so you'll find that actually example 4 and you have a solution for that so please check that so now we finalize example 5 please try it by yourself okay i will leave that for you i will leave Example 5 for you, the style is binomial distribution, and the next lecture I will start the El Poisson distribution. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.